When I think about my life, when I think about my future, there are a lot of possibilities that come to mind. But in all of these potential realities, there is one thing that remains constant, and that is my desire to frolic about in nature while wearing frilly dresses. You thought I was going to get deep with you for a moment, didn't you? Fooled you! Hello! If you're new here, my name's Alana and I like to make things. I've also been accepted to vet school at St. George's University in Grenada. And if there is an easy way to make those two things cohesive, I haven't found it yet. In order to prepare for my move, I have planned to make a number of practical or professional garments that I'll wear a lot and will help get me through my vet school years. Bye! First one I'm going to make is something totally impractical and just super self-indulgent. And I have been lovingly calling that the adventure dress. This dress will actually not be useful for any real adventuring, but we're going for aesthetics here. So basically, I'm going to show you the design that I have planned for this adventure dress and we can get started. I'm planning for an off-the-shoulder design and a little slit at the front with a little bow. The top of the bodice is going to be gathered up and I'm going to add shearing or shirring. Shearing at the waist, so from under bust to like the smallest part of my waist, this will all be sheared, shirred, whatever. And then just a pretty basic skirt, probably just a rectangle, and then big old poofy sleeves, and a little bit more shearing at the bottom here to make a bit of a cuff. So in essence, that is the design. It's fairly basic. And I also want to add a little bit of a ruffle at the top. However, I'm not sure yet if I want it to fold down or up. Fold like that or kind of like a standing ruffle. I think I'm leaning towards the flat down ruffle, but we'll see when we get there. So, you know, lots of gathering, lots of volume. It should blow beautifully in the breeze and it should be super impractical. And I can't wait. I bet you I'm gonna wear it all the time. So what is practicality even if not just something that you get a lot of use out of? I have purchased four meters of this white cotton wall. Wall, I think it's pronounced. Voil. Wall. But it is just like really light and flowy. Basically, I just want something that will blow in the breeze. That's all I'm looking for here. So this was perfect. So it's already been pre-washed. I just have to iron it, which is like my least favorite thing because my iron is very small. But I'm going to iron all this and then just get started, I guess. I didn't actually iron this fabric yesterday because I was working on a, another project. Actually, I'm wearing said project. And I decided I would rather weave in the yarn tails than iron the fabric. So that pretty much says everything you need to know about how much I loathe ironing fabric. But I'm actually gonna iron this right now and it'll be worth it because adventure dress. Here's some footage of me being a good little seamstress and ironing my fabric. Wow, so professional looking. To keep me honest, here's some footage of what it's actually like when I iron fabric, including the fact that I wear a gold sequined cat ear headband pretty much all the time when I'm at home, and especially when I iron because it makes me very, very sweaty. Now it was time to start cutting out the fabric pieces. I needed six rectangles, two that were as wide as my bust measurement and the length from over bust to waist, plus some seam allowance, two that were my waist measurement and as long as desired, I wanted my skirt to be around mid-calf length, and two rectangles that were the desired length for the sleeves, plus 20 centimeters, and double the width from underarm to underarm. I cut my sleeves to be wrist length at first, but well, you'll see what happens with them later. Once I had my measurements, I opted to just tear the fabric, as cottons are usually pretty good with this and it helps you cut the fabric on the grain line. Just make a snip in the fabric at the correct length, then, as the kids would say in the time of Beyblades, let it rip. 
all my fabric pieces are cut out. So that was actually the best fabric cutting experience I've ever had because I pretty much just ripped the fabric instead of cutting it out. So I have two rectangles for the bodice. Widthwise, they are my full bust measurement. So when, once they're sewn together, it will be, you know, double my bust measurement and then we'll gather that down. And lengthwise, they go from the top of my bust to my waist, plus a little extra for seam allowance. The sleeves, so I used, again, the full width of the fabric, which was 55 inches. So I was going to make my sleeves basically a square, 30 by 30 inches, but I made them actually 30 inches one way and about 27 and a half, which is half of the 55 inch wide fabric. So that means that they will either be less poofy around or like long you know what I mean so I think I might want to just sacrifice the length and leave the volume around the poofiness but we'll see I'll kind of fuss with them but those are the sleeves and then the skirt I was thinking about circle skirts and then I was thinking about how wasteful that is just fabric wise and then I can't just tear it so I have used, the, again, the width of the fabric, so the front and back of each skirt piece will be 55 inches wide, and the length, I cut it about 35 inches long, and I have a decent amount of fabric left over for if I screw anything up, basically, and I do want to add a ruffle at the neck, so that is plenty for that. I am not adding pockets to this dress, I think, because as I've said, this is not a dress for practicality, it is just a totally self-indulgent frolicking dress. And I think if I put my phone in my pocket, which is really the only thing I ever put in my pockets, it'll ruin the lines of the frolicking dress. So pockets are out. We are favoring aesthetics over function in this video. <laughs> I cut out a triangle from the sides of each top edge of the sleeves and bodice pieces that were 1 inch at the base and 4 inches high to help reduce bulk at the underarm seam. These were actually kind of narrow. I'd probably make the triangle 2 inches wide and maybe 6 inches tall next time. What is going on with your gut? Mitch! <laughs> are you about to explode? Please don't. I don't want to clean that up. <laughs> Mitch, did you With all the pieces cut out and prepared, I could start assembling them. The first pieces were the bodice pieces, which were just sewn together along the side seams below the triangle I'd cut out previously. After sewing the pieces together, I serged the raw edges. I've had this serger for over two years now, and I rarely use it because I'm kind of afraid of it, but I decided to just get over myself and just do it, and I think it looks really nice. To finish the ends of the serged pieces, I threaded the thread chain through a darning needle, threaded it back through the serged edge, and snipped the end. If your thread chain is a little too short, you can also insert the needle into the serged edge first, then thread the chain and pull. Just popping in with some deep thoughts with Alana. If you've been here for any amount of time, you may have noticed that I've been sewing in a different location. And mainly that's because my old machine, or my alt other machine, technically this machine is much older, but my other machine is not working right now, so I pulled this one out and I'm using it here on our tiny kitchen table that we never use anyway as the backup. And I've actually really been enjoying it because it's way easier to film over here. But now that I have this serger here as well, here's the problem <laughs> because there's no plugs nearby. So I have an extension cord which is fine, but it only has three spots in it. And light, light, machine. I have to keep not only switching these back and forth which, with each other, but also I have to keep unplugging one and plugging in the other. So, you know, I'm going through some lengths for this project. This is footage from the first attempt at making the sleeves. Yes, there was more than one. This attempt would later be scrapped, but I had to leave this footage in because... Right now, I think I'm just gonna put these sleeves aside and work on the rest of the dress. 
So firstly, I'm going to sew the skirt pieces together and then gather down the top of the skirt and sew that to the bodice. And then that's at least something and maybe I can think about how to make this work in the back of my mind. Like Einstein at the patent office. That's the same thing. Good morning. It is another new day. I'm here in a nest of sewing machines, which is my truest form. I spent the rest of last evening... <laughs> last evening? I spent the rest of yesterday evening kind of... Bella, could you not? I spent the rest of last night trying to... Mittens. I spent the rest of yesterday trying to figure out the best settings for shearing on my machine and I think I've come up with it. I think I've fixed it. Unfortunately, you can't fix stupid. My issue really is that this sleeve is just too wide to be gathered down that much by shearing alone. I'm pretty sure it can only gather it to like 50% maximum. So. Bummer. So basically, I can't unpick the shearing without pretty much rendering the fabric unusable. So I've cut out new sleeves. They're just rectangles, so I mean, not very exciting. I'm going to sew the sleeves again, but this time I'm just going to add a channel and thread some elastic through there. And that should work totally fine. I'm giving up on this whole shearing debacle for the sleeves, at least I'm still going to shear the bodice. But anyway, so essentially yesterday I didn't do anything at all. <laughs> but today we're gonna be productive. Let's make a dress. <laughs> okay, we're back on track now. With the sleeves cut again and the bottom edge hemmed again, I decided how far I wanted the elastic channel to be. I marked a line at that point with a water soluble marker and rather than sewing on a separate channel, I first folded the sleeve to that point, then sewed a row of stitches, leaving a channel that was wide enough to fit two pieces of skinny elastic. I actually sewed this channel to the right side of the fabric, but you can't really see it in the end, so I decided I didn't care. If you do care though, make sure to fold the fabric up with right sides together, so the stitching won't be seen from the right side. After the first line is sewn, you're left with a loose pocket thing. I pressed that down towards the top of the sleeve and pinned and top stitched that in place, as close to the edge as I could. I also sewed a second line of stitching in the middle of that channel. Depending on the width of your elastic, you might only want to use one piece of elastic, in which case a second row of stitching isn't necessary. Well, this uh, isn't the most convenient place you could have chosen to lay. Can you hear her cry? Eventually, Bella decided to leave so I could move on to adding elastic to the sleeves. Oh, just kidding, I guess. Okay, quickly now. I used two pieces of 5mm elastic that were as wide as my wrist. I found it was easiest to attach them both to the sleeve with a safety pin at one end and draw them through the channels with safety pins at the other end at the same time. This way the sleeve isn't gathered already by one elastic as you're making your way through with the second. To secure the ends of the elastic, I sewed a couple rows of zigzag stitches over the ends. It's important to note that at this point the sleeves haven't been sewn up into tubes yet. But that's the next step. The sleeves were pinned, sewed, and surged along the underarm seam, up until the triangle that we cut out earlier. Now the skirt pieces could be sewn together. Again, these seams were pinned, sewn, and surged along the side seams. I also surged the top edge of the skirt and the bottom edge of the bodice where they'd be sewn together later. Sometimes after I sneeze, 
it like tastes and smells like honey in my nose. Someone please explain. Now it was time to gather the top of the skirt. I sewed two rows of gathering stitches along the top between the side seams to make sure the area to be gathered wouldn't be too long and unruly. I like to backstitch at the start of each row of gathering threads. This isn't advisable for thicker fabrics, but I find it's much easier to gather thinner fabrics if you have an anchor at one end. Then you can pull on the top threads to gather the skirt down so it's the same width as the bodice. The bodice and skirt pieces can then be pinned and sewn together, matching up the side seams. Congratulations! You now have a tube of fabric that's twice as wide as your body. Now it's time to add sleeves to it. I lined up the underarm seam with the side seam with right sides together and pinned outwards from there. The triangles should match up nicely with each other. I also tried to pin the seam allowances opposite each other to make the seam less bulky. The sleeves were then sewn on and the seam was very carefully serged. Let's add a ruffle now. I took the remainder of my fabric and tore it into three equal pieces. I mean, I tried to make them equal, they weren't perfect. I sewed them together to make one long strip, then I switched out my regular presser foot for a rolled hem foot and hemmed one side of the ruffle strip. I wish I had some good rolled hem foot advice, but I don't think I'm qualified for that, so we'll try to find a good tutorial and link it below. You can also do a rolled hem with some good old fashioned ironing and sewing, so you don't need any special feet for this. Before sewing the ruffle to the dress, I wanted to cut a slit in the front of the dress. I marked a 4 inch line at center front, then carefully cut along that line. I then used some white bias tape from my stash to encase the raw edge, sewing it to the front side first, then folding it around and stitching in the ditch to secure the other edge. This was a bit finicky, but just use lots of pins and go slow and you'll get through it. It's not perfect, but I have never successfully stitched in the ditch before and this isn't as invisible as I would maybe like but uh, it worked good enough so yay my neckline or my neck slit thing is complete. I should really know better by now than to leave my projects on my workspace because they make really good cat beds. Oh. Now I could sew the ruffle to the top of the dress. First, I folded in one end of the ruffle strip twice so I'd have a finished edge, then pinned it. This is a little counterintuitive, but you want to sew the right side of the ruffle to the wrong side of the dress. We'll be flipping it out after, and this will ensure both right sides are facing out at the end. Continue pinning and sewing around the top edge of the bodice and sleeves, and trim the excess ruffle strip at the other end folding that end in twice as well for neat finished edges all around. You should know that whenever you see footage from this angle, it means I'm sitting around my tripod like this. I'm basically Patrick Swayze in Ghost, and you're that lady and we're making a bowl or whatever. I've never actually seen Ghost, but I think about that scene every time I sew like this. Okay, voiceover Alana, time to focus. After the ruffle was sewn on, I trimmed the excess from the top of the dress, then flipped the ruffle out to the outside of the dress and ironed the edge. Then I sewed another row of stitching along the top edge, wide enough to make a channel that would fit some elastic. We're getting very close to finishing this dress. Mm. Oh, are you talking to the camera? Yes, Mitchell. Okay. We're getting very close to being finished with this dress. Um, obviously, I have to do the waist shearing still. But before I do that, so I'm going to thread the elastic through the top and just pin it to kind of get the placement first. And I'm not going to sew that in yet because I think that'll make sewing or yeah, doing the shearing a lot harder. So I'm just gonna safety pin it for now and figure out how, like, how high I want the shearing to start and then take the elastic out, shear the waist, put the elastic back in. <laughs> so it's an extra step, but I think it'll help the dress fit better when all is said and done. After determining where I wanted the shirring to start, I marked a line around the dress at that point. Now we could get on to the actual shirring. You'll need some elastic thread wound by hand onto a bobbin. Winding by hand is crucial to make sure the elastic isn't stretched by the machine if you were to wind it in the usual manner. 
Then you can just pop the bobbin into the machine as normal and begin sewing. You'll probably have to experiment with the settings on your machine to determine what works best for you, but for mine, increasing the stitch length to about four and a half, maximum is five, and increasing the tension slightly above universal worked best. I began with a back stitch, then sewed one straight line of shirring. Rather than back stitching and starting the next row, I decided to just spiral down for each new row of shirring, using the side of my presser foot and the previous line of stitching as a guide for where to sew. After that, it was just a matter of sewing straight lines around and around and around and around until you reach the waistline. Make sure to pull the fabric as you sew, as this is what makes the elastic stretch and creates that bunched effect. I've had to put on my glasses because steering at a quarter of an inch, little lines, white thread and white fabric has made me go a little cross-eyed. If your bobbin runs out without you noticing, take a moment to slightly rage, then just Backtrack a bit and begin sewing over the previous line with a new bobbin and a new respect for how much it sucks when bobbins run out as you're sewing. When you think you're done shirring, you're not. Sure some more. This is your life now. You shall never be free. After your one eternity of shirring is finished, make sure to backstitch at the end. I wrote my voiceover script and put four exclamation marks here so you know it's important. With the shirring finally completed, it's time to thread some elastic through the top of the dress. I didn't have a long enough piece of elastic in the thickness I wanted, but instead of going out and getting more, I sewed a thinner piece to the end. Don't be like me, just use the same width all around. Or don't, I'm not your mom. Using your appropriately or inappropriately sized piece of elastic, thread that through the top using a safety pin to your desired length and make sure to try it on with the elastic still pinned to test the fit. I've just tried the dress on to get the right length for the elastic at the top and I think it's good. Everything's just pinned in place now. This is the sleeve and I think it looks a little bit like a clown. It, it's giving me Pennywise vibes. I think that I'm going to add another channel at the elbow, put some elastic in it and I think that helps make it look more princessy and less killer clown. I kind of just like it as a short sleeve, but it's hard to tell, really. Oh, I guess it's not hard to tell. That looks pretty good. Uh-oh. Okay, so this side is like the bubble sleeve, and this side, I mean, it's too long, so it's hard to exactly tell, but I think, I think this is the winner. So, heck. Yes, I did redo the sleeves for the third time. Well, I guess I didn't completely redo them, I just cut off the bottom edge and redid the elastic channels. I'll spare you from having to watch that part again as I just repeated all the same steps from before, but higher. I also sewed two pieces of bias tape closed, then sewed the ends into the open end of the elastic channel at the top of the dress, catching the bias tape, elastic, and dress in the stitches. Finally, all that was left to do was the hem and the dress was complete. Normally I would just throw on this dress and film a reveal here in my backyard, but I think she deserves more. Let's see what else we can do. Sometimes, when the air is still and the day is new, when the morning dew still clings to the earth, not yet burned away by the first rays of the sun, basic bitches can be seen running slow-mo in the woods pretending their lives are far more mystical than they really are. If you should be so blessed as to see one of these creatures in their natural habitat, remember not to feed them, or your town may soon be overrun. In all seriousness, I absolutely love this dress. It definitely has a chemise a la rain vibe that I didn't intend, but I'm not at all mad at. We're horrible at remembering to take video footage, but just look at these photos we got. Adventure dress, final thoughts. I love it, that's all, thanks for watching. Just kidding, there are a couple things that definitely could be improved upon. For example, I shouldn't have used two different widths of elastic in the top because this side has the skinny elastic and it pulls more because it's weaker. So that was really stupid of me. 
And if I weren't afraid of human interaction, I would have just gone to the store. But here we are, and I have a lopsided top of this dress. Another thing is that I think I need to extend the shearing, shearing a little bit further down. I have a very long body, and my waist is actually like two centimeters lower than where the shearing stops. So that's something I may or may not add in the future, depending on how lazy I am. But all in all, I love this dress, and just imagine me standing on like the side of a cliff overlooking the ocean, and the dress is flowing in the breeze, and I put it on slow mo. That's literally why I made this dress. To fulfill that image, so eventually, you shall see me standing on the side of a cliff facing the sea with my dress flowing in the breeze, and I can't wait for those days. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. If you'd like to watch another video, you can click here or here. I've never done this before, so click wherever there's a clicker thing. And I'll see you next time. Bye. I don't know how to tell people how to subscribe. I've never done it before. <laughs> what do I well, why don't you just subscribe to the channel if you liked it, and like and comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.